When I was growing up, whenever the doors of the church were open, it seemed that uh, our family was always there. Now, I grew up in a, a small country church, and actually we were on a two-point charge, which meant that uh, our pastors served two different churches. And so um, on Sunday evenings, we would have uh, services, and they would alternate back and forth between the, the two churches. Now, not as many people came to, to Sunday evening services, but probably the crowd was about the same size as either one of the, the congregations had on, on Sunday morning at, at their services. And, and so whenever the Sunday evening services happened, we were, were always there. Now, there was a, there was a guy from uh, the other church that was often there, and, and I'll call him Jim. And uh, Jim would often share in the, the evening service about what God had been doing in his life. And, and uh, I was just always encouraged by, by what Jim had to say. And, and, you know, I just really believed that he was such a, a man of God from what I saw on uh, on, on Sunday evenings in, in those services. Well, at, uh, at age 15, I had my first job. Uh, I was uh, worked in a town about eight miles from, from where we lived, and, uh, and I was uh, on the mowing crew at a, at a cemetery. Now, my, my boss had a factory job, so a lot of times I, I would work alone, but whenever my boss was... Uh, was working with me, he would often take me to lunch. And uh, there was this kind of small, greasy spoon uh, restaurant in, in Montpelier that he would, would uh, take me to. It uh, probably full may have held 20 to 25 people. So it wasn't a, wasn't a very large place. Well, we were there one, one day and, uh, and for, for lunch, and, and in walks Jim uh, along with... Uh, his co-workers that uh, you know, were working on a job with him. And uh, as I told you, it was a rather small place, but uh, Jim had a rather large voice. So even though he was just talking to the, the, the guys at his table, everyone in the whole restaurant heard everything that, that Jim had to say. Well, I was shocked. Every sentence that came out of, of Jim's mouth had a, a cuss word or or use God's name or Jesus' name in vain. Now, this didn't seem to, to be the, the same guy that, that I witnessed uh, giving testimony on Sunday evening at, at church. He was using a totally different vocabulary than he used at church. And, um, you know, in that moment, I lost so much respect for, for Jim because who he said he was in church and and who he was out in the community were, were two totally different people. When I was in seminary, I lived with uh, seven other guys. And uh, we had a, a house with four bedrooms. There were two of us in, in each bedroom. We had two, two full baths and a living room, a dining room, and, and kitchen. And uh, you know, through that experience, I probably learned more about marriage and how to to live in a household and care for a, a household and meals and, and all that than, than any other experience that, that I've had in my life. But, um, you know, our second year in the house, we, we had a vacancy. You know, now, we had always had seminary students living with us, but, uh, you know, the, the problem with having only seven guys in the house was that the bills were divided by seven rather than eight. So we were kind of anxious to get that eighth spot filled. And uh, one day, uh, a, a seminary student, a married seminary student, came to us and said that his brother needed a place to, to live. His brother had been a, a student at Asbury College and, and uh, for whatever reason, had, had dropped out of school. And uh, Scott was just struggling to, to find himself. You know, he had really low self-esteem. You know, Scott was probably, you know, he could have been the born loser. You know, it seemed like everything that Scott went to do just went wrong. And so, um, you know, we needed a, an eighth person in the house, and, and Scott needed a, a place to live. We thought, you know, even though he's not a seminary student, hopefully we can encourage him, hopefully we can, can help him out, and, and it would certainly help our bills to divide them by eight rather than seven. And, and so Scott came to, to, to live with us, and, and Phil was his roommate. Now, one day, uh, Scott had a, a job interview, 
It was about five miles out of town, but he had no car. He had no way to get there. So he asked Phil, his roommate, if he could borrow his car. And so Phil said, of course, you can, can borrow my car. And Scott, Scott borrowed his car and went to the, to the job interview, and, and everything was fine. But it was a beautiful fall day in central Kentucky. You know, and Scott was bored. He, he thought, you know, you know, I think I'll just drive down to the Kentucky River and, uh, and, and enjoy the, the fall day. Well, as he took the, the winding road, uh, the winding highway down to the Kentucky River, uh, Scott rounded a, a bend, but uh, didn't say on his side of the road. And he ran into a Mack truck head on. You know, Scott ended up in the hospital for, for several days, easily could have, have been killed. Uh, Phil's car w was total. Uh, what I remember from that experience was Phil's response. Phil was never angry. You know, he, he was never upset in that, that process, but he was always concerned about Scott. He was always concerned about uh, Scott getting better. You know, and, and in that process, as I, as I watched Phil's response, he really lived out what was in his heart. He really lived out who he was as a follower of Christ. And because of that experience, you know, my respect for Phil grew tremendously. Let me ask you a question the, this morning. When others see how you act at school, how you act in the workplace, what you say around the table at the coffee shop, you know, how it is that you treat your neighbors, how it is that you deal with challenges in life. Does the respect for you go up or does the respect for you to go down? Well, this morning we're going to continue our series that's entitled... The Bible instructs us of whom it, to whom it is that we should show respect. First of all, we're to, um, to respect God. You know, in the t Ten Commandments, it tells us that we're to have no other gods before him. Uh, the Ten Commandments also tell us that we are to respect our, our, our father and, and mother. You know, we are to, to show respect for the elders, for those who have, have gone before us. In many cases, those who have gone before us and, and made sacrifices for us to, to be able to experience uh, what, what we experience in, in life and enjoy. You know, in marriage relationships, there should be a mutual respect. Wives are to respect their husbands. Husbands are to respect their, their wives. We're to respect those who work hard. We're to respect those who are over us. Now, that could be referring to um, our our bosses, it could be referring to teachers, it could be referring to, uh, uh, to, to government officials. You know, we live in a culture that looks for excuses to show disrespect. 
or when we, we find a, a reason to, to disrespect someone, we, we believe that it, it's okay to, to broadcast that, and we, we believe that it's okay to, uh, uh, to malign that person with whatever it is that, that they've said or, or done or that, uh, that uh, has caused us to disrespect them, or uh, often it's just a matter of, of disagreement. You know, last week, Pastor Kelly told us that we don't always need to agree but she said, disagreement is not a reason for disrespect. Disagreement is not a reason to, to demonize another person. In 1 Corinthians 1.20, Paul writes, Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this, philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? If God's wisdom tells us that we should respect all these people. But the world makes excuses for us about why we don't need to respect them. Who should we listen to? Should we listen to God's instructions or should we, should we follow the, uh, the, the ways and the example of, of this world? I find many examples of where we are, are instructed to respect uh, God, fathers and mothers, elders, wives, husbands, and, and and wives, those who are over us. But, but never in Scripture do I see where fathers and mothers or, or, um, or those in authority are to demand respect of others. So on the one hand, the Bible tells us that we are to respect these people. But on the other hand, it doesn't give us permission to demand respect. What, what the Bible does tell us, though, is that we have an opportunity to earn respect. You know, this morning I want us to spend the, the rest of our time looking at that topic of how is it that we can earn respect in our lives. I believe that uh, first and, and foremost, the, the way we earn res the respect of others is to keep our word. And so um, our main scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 5 and I want to begin reading with verse 33 says, again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it's, it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. You know, Jesus said there's no need for you to, uh, to, to swear by God or anything else. To state it very simply, he said your yes should be yes and your no should be no. Your, your word should, should be your bond. The problem with lying is that uh, whenever you tell one lie, you always need to tell another one to, uh, to, to cover that one up. And so Jesus said the easiest way to live is just simply be honest. You know, do what you say you're going to do. Mean what, mean what you say when, when you say it. You know, John Stott once said, swearing or taking oaths is really a pathetic confession of our own dishonesty. You know, have you ever heard someone make a promise and then, then they'll say, you know, I, I swear on a stack of Bibles or, you know, what, whatever, their, whatever their promise is. And, and often the more forceful they are about swearing that what they've said is indeed true is probably a red flag that uh, there's, there's greater reason to, to doubt them at, at that point. It's been said that oaths arise because men and women are so often liars. Well, if you want to earn the, the respect of others, you should live your life in such a way that you have a, a reputation of being a man or woman of your word. Live your life in such a way that you gain a reputation of being someone who will keep your word. The people know that they can trust whatever it is that, that you say. Another way that we can earn the respect of others is to be kind-hearted. The writer of Proverbs says that uh, a kind-hearted woman gains respect. This idea of, 
of being kind-hearted carries with it the, uh, the idea of being gracious. It means uh, responding to someone in a way that, that they haven't earned or, or don't deserve. You know, this summer when the, the hurricanes hit down south, I remember hearing stories of, of people who had, had made it through the, the hurricanes and, and their homes were, were basically untouched. And they would invite others to come and live with them. In some cases, individuals or families that they didn't even know, but they invited to, them to, to come and, and live with them because they were in need. It was an issue, those people who, who opened their home, they, they were gracious, they, they were kind-hearted in responding to, to those who, who had a need. You know, I believe that, that those acts, they didn't do them you know, in order to earn respect, but as they did those things in helping people in, in need, it was a matter of, of them earning respect. Now, I believe that what was happening at, at that point was they were just living out what it was that the that was in their heart. You know, maybe you could invite a person at, at, uh, at, at the lunch table. Maybe you could in invite someone in, in the workplace to, um, uh, to come and join you at, at your table. Or, or maybe you could even go out of your way and, and ask that person who's sitting by themselves, uh, ask if, if you could, could join them. The writer of Proverbs, uh, also wrote, let love and faithfulness never leave you. And the result is that you will win favor. Another way to say that is you, you will learn, earn respect. You'll win the favor of both God and others. Remember the, the story that I told at the beginning about Phil and, and Scott. You know, Phil was gracious to Scott. You know, Phil was kind-hearted to, to Scott. And, and in that process, you know, Phil was just simply living who he was. He was, was letting his character come out. But, but the result was that, uh, that my level of respect for, for him grew tremendously on that day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 uh, say, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders. As Paul, Silas, and Timothy are, are writing to the, to the church at, at Thessalonica, they, they tell them to earn the respect of, of outsiders. You know, the, those outsiders that they're talking about is those outside the church. They're saying, you know, live your life in such a way that you are gaining the respect of those who are, are not yet believers, that you are gaining the respect of those who, who aren't a, a part of the fellowship. You know, there are three things that, uh, that he tells them that, that they can do to, to gain the respect of those who, who may not share their faith. He says, first of all, make it your goal uh, or ambition to lead a quiet life. Don't make everything about you. You don't have to always be the the center of attention, no matter what others do. You, know, you don't need to have your life to, to be filled with, with drama. Do those people whose life is normally filled with drama gain your respect? Are those normally people who, whose life you want to follow their, their example? They may gain attention, but they don't normally gain your respect. Uh, secondly, um, Paul says, mind your own business. There are always those who are trying to, to put their nose in someone else's business. You know, they're often involved in, in gossip. They're often involved in, in spreading rumors and, and stories. You know, someone who is involved in, in gossip and, and, and spreading rumors, you know, they're not normally someone that, that others will, will respect. You know, so in your life, you need to be about minding your own business. You know, now, that's not saying that others won't ever reach out to you. And when others do reach out to you or, or you reach out to them, maybe they share something in confidence with you. You need to, to keep that to yourself. They need to be able to, to trust you with, with that information. 
And as you mind your own business, as you treat others with, with respect, as you treat others' circumstances with, with respect, then it's a way that your respect will grow. The third thing in these verses that, that um, er, talk about earning our respect is that we're to, to work hard. We've all, all known someone who has uh, tried to avoid work, someone who is not overly ambitious, and, and that person normally doesn't gain the respect of others. Whether it's um, on the, the floor in, in the factory or whether it's uh, in, in an office or in a classroom, there, there are those who, who give it their all. And those who give it their, their all over time earn the trust and, and respect of, of others because they, they get the job done. You know, I, there are other things that the scripture says about how we earn respect, and, and I'm just going to, to name some of them very, very quickly. We don't have time to, to go into to all of them. But uh, one of the things that, uh, another way that, that we can earn respect is, is by being patient. Be, being patient or, with others and being patient with others in, in our interactions with them especially in challenging, challenging or stressful situations, as we show patience, we gain the, the respect of others. We earn the respect of others by, by not acting in ways that bring embarrassment. You know, often the life of the party, the person that's talked about for days or weeks after the party, the person that has the most outrageous posts on, on, on Facebook following a, a social gathering, is not normally the person who has gained the respect of others who are present or others who are, are, are seeing that, that post on, so, on social media. You, know, you earn the respect of others by managing your household. The way you raise your children, the way you invest in your children can earn the, the respect of others. And finally, the way you speak to others, particularly when you speak to others with gentleness, you can gain their respect. As followers of Christ, we're instructed to, uh, to respect others. But there are also things that we can do to earn the respect of others. You know, earning the, the respect of, of others is not a one-time endeavor. Now, there may be something that, that happens that, that boosts our, um, someone's view of us and, and our respect for us. But we gain that respect over time. We gain that respect by consistency in, in our actions and the ways people see us. Just as that respect is built by our consistent actions over time, you know, one action can also um, damage that respect very quickly. We live in a culture where showing disrespect seems to be very acceptable. But as followers of Christ, we're called to be different. We are called to, to show respect. We're called to live our lives in such a way that we earn the respect of others. Let us pray. Lord, we live in a world that is filled with disrespect. And we confess that it's sometimes very easy for us to get sucked into to, to that disrespect in, in the way we treat others. And Lord, I pray that when we start going that, down that road, that, that you would help us to see what, what we're doing, that you would help us to see that, that we're not honoring you in, in the way we're treating others. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to live our lives in, in such a way that we would earn the respect of others and also we would honor you in the process. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.